floral production, food production, you know, they're kind of looked at as, you know, separate entities, but they're really all end results. And we incorporate the different systems. And, and I'm really glad that, that not only a gene touched upon, um, you know, initially the systems within a growing system, we talk about this on the podcast a lot, you know, people tend with the technology, they tend to talk about uh, a container farm system or a greenhouse farm is kind of like a, a plug and play, you set it up and you turn it on and the plants grow. And it's it, proper management. Again, to, to Gene's point of it's all about the plant is that we're managing a, a large array and interactions of different systems from environmental control systems, living biological systems, from the plant to the microbial flora in the in the root zone to the biological pest control. We're employing all of these sometimes very delicate and interrelated systems. It's it's really like uh, directing a symphony, if you will. And and Gene then took it to the point of incorporating the systems of the people, uh, not only from a, a standpoint of utilizing labor, providing research and, and, and his connections with people in the academia world, but also in terms of providing the social benefits, uh, uh, employment, Coming from a farming background myself, you know, seasonal farm, you know, entry level seasonal farm work stinks. It's very difficult. It's very dangerous. It's very limited. Economics are terrible controlled environment and agriculture has allowed communities to completely change that um, dynamic completely. Um, and so I'm glad he's, he's kind of talked about pulling that all in. And then to his last point of, of utilizing CEA for different outcomes, it's not just about producing this crop or that crop, but actually developing um, uh, extra added value products. A lot of genetic work uh, is being done right now as well. So that's all really um, just fascinating. And then, of course, taking it to the ultimate level with space program. I hear this a lot. You know, well, we don't really. So we're, we're going to send some some plants to the moon and we're going to grow in space. Big deal. No, the 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 value of not only the food, the life sustain, um, life sustaining uh, products are part of that. But that interrelationship um, in an environment like that, where we now have to go to how do we manage waste? Uh, yes. How do we purify yes. our water? How do we incorporate our, our air systems, carbon dioxide and, and generating um, oxygen as well? Those systems are all kind of, if you boil them down, kind of into the little CEA model, but expands to really cover so much more. We take it for granted here on earth, but um, the level that we can develop. Or even some of the waste going to uh, dog, uh, dog food companies, uh, they use some of the lettuce waste uh, in the dog food. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. as pro as probiotics or something like that mm -hmm. yeah yeah um some persons or some systems waste is somebody else's valuable resource and we have to look at it that way if we're going to have closed systems and and if we're going to have limited ability to add to those closed systems uh, you need to recycle um, and that's not to forget that we're on this ball that we call planet Earth that has limited resources and has to uh, go through natural recycling systems. Um, and if they are long enough and we can wait them out, then that's fine. But if we begin tapping them so strongly that uh, we need to regenerate things more quickly, then we're going to have to do uh, offer some help in doing that. And and essentially in our in our Mars lunar greenhouse, that that is the expectation. We're far from the solution. I got to keep that <laughs> emphasize that. Um, I mean, our hydroponic system demonstrated. Um, biomass production. We could produce the plants. We could produce the calories, um, the oxygen, and the fresh water. And we monitored that. And we monitored all the energy we put in to do that, you know, primarily the lights, um, uh, but also the HVAC system. Um, and then it, it gave back to us uh, the products that we're looking for. And it was that balance, those numbers that came to be of most interest to NASA. Not well, how we also the heat coming off of the lamps is also captured too, right? And can be used throughout the, the lunar calendar. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Um, the 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 heat is is has to be uh, cooled. Uh, and in cooling you're also dehumidifying. So that's a natural combination process uh, which works. But the 
Um, what, what I think the most important thing that came out of that, and again, there's a lot more to do. Um, we did the energy balance and we put in the plant production of that energy balance. Mm -hmm. So we got an idea of how many um, grams of edible biomass, how much grams of food per input of, of light or of water or of labor for that matter. And to me, this, this metric, this ratio is a number that we should be looking at in all growing systems on earth because it can quantify how efficient you are or how inefficient you may be um, in producing in producing that crop. And that is beginning to happen now. We, we, we see that um, the, the, the so-called smart agriculture and precision agriculture in the open fields, they're learning to, to monitor and utilize that water more efficiently. And if not the water, at least the nutrients, the nitrates that are going into the soil and what's being used and what's being washed away, for example. So in the closed systems, we, uh, we have an unfair advantage. Um, we collect all our unused materials it's there um, and you can do something with it. Um, again, we're learning how to do and what to do with it. Um, but the fact that we could grow these crops and even um, for uh, not the first time, but, but certainly emphasized more than others in the past, um, we were multi-cropping in the same environment, which I think will be a natural thing you have to do. So no plant, had an optimum, far from it. They, they had to share and tolerate pH being too high or too low uh, temperature. Uh, we were growing lettuce with strawberries and tomato um, and then sweet potato. Uh, think about the environmental needs for those. It's, it's so diverse. But you can do small things about where you locate them in the climate control system and, and at what level you're fertilizing and no one grew at an optimum, but they all grew. And, and that was certainly a, a, a big time goal there. Um, I, I'd like to add that um, we're not finished. Uh, I've been saying that, but, but how do we continue? Um, the Mars Luna Greenhouse is still there. It, it uh, is up and running. We have uh, students that are learning how to operate it. Um, and, and I love that. Um, plus, it's there for when we have the opportunity to do a, uh, a show and tell, so to speak. Um, you know, here is an operating Mars Luna greenhouse. Um, I challenge you to find that in many other places around the world. Uh, but here it is in, in, in our lab. But I, I see the next opportunity. Um, and you might re remember that Biosphere 2 is just up the road about an hour from the University of Arizona, where it was developed almost 30 years ago. Um, for um, a mission to Mars, basically, that, that it was a closed three-acre environment. Well, it had some pre preliminary hardware, a small dome uh, of a few hundred square feet, and that is becoming operable again. And there is a man, Kai Stats, who's working, uh, who we are working with um, to help in the crop production side of things, and it, it's it's um, it's called SAM Space Analog for Moon and Mars. So it's SAM two actually Moon and Mars, and and Kai envisions that this will become a demonstration habitat um, uh, with a with a food production component that we're working on, but also a laboratory, a living quarters component, and even a Mars yard. Uh, a lot of Arizona looks like Mars, you know, when you see. <laughs> um, anyway, we, we can set it up. He can set it up so that um, you can practice with spacesuits. You can practice uh, with technology inside for life support. And I'm looking forward to this as, as the near future um, next phase of what the Mars Luna Greenhouse was, because that was the food com production component and some of the life support but now include that into a living quarters and, and habitat that has laboratories and has the opportunity to, to go out and, and uh, visit uh, the Mars yard, so to speak.
Um, that uh, will be the legacy. I think that will be the continuation and hopefully the further expansion of what is done here at the University of Arizona relative to habitats and, and living on, uh, on other planets.